Hey everyone, here's how to make vibe style transitions like this. As always, sapphire is required, so let's begin with slide transitions and then move on to grain and flicker for a stylistic effect. Stage 1, slides. So the first thing I'm going to do is directly add on warp transform onto my clip, just like that. I want my clip to move from left to right, so I'm going to keyframe the shift x, y and also the z disk and change the wrap x and y both to reflect like so. I'm going to shift my x and y just like that, maybe a little bit higher as well. And I'm also going to change my z disk to let's go 1.2. If that seems a bit too extreme, then you can do something lower like 1.1. That seems perfect. And then what I'm going to do is head to the end one frame back. So not to the very end, one frame back and then reset it. Same goes for the z disk, just reset it and then graph it like how I do. So pull the handle for the second keyframe to the left and then the same applies to the z-disc just like that in fact one frame ahead and make sure the velocity is at zero it can't be something high like 0.1 or 0.2 zero is perfect like that so now we've got our slide to the right if you want to you can also tighten this up so if i had about five six frames ahead and push my second z-disc keyframe to my playhead the scale in looks a bit more snappy and so it hides the mirror around the edges but i'm going to leave it as it is and then i'm going to close my warp transform effect and then add it on once again just underneath it we're going to do the same transition but the other way around so keyframe both shift x y at the beginning and also the z-disc head to the end one frame back and then I'm just going to shift it to my right. If you're seeing the end of the clip, then don't worry. Just set the wrap X and Y both to reflect. So I'm just going to move mine to about here and also maybe a little bit higher. I also want it to scale out. So I'm going to go 1.1 for the Z disk and I'm going to graph this, but it's going to be the other way around. So we're going to pull the first handle of the first keyframe we made all the way to the left like that and the same applies to the z disk it might seem a bit tricky because the bar is so low but just pay attention to the velocity as always in short it's on zero and it will look perfectly fine the result looks great however i think we could improve this by tightening up the keyframes to be specific these ones that we just made so instead of leaving the beginning keyframes apart from the last ones we can tighten these up so if i just move about five key fr five frames backwards and then shift these to my right. I've now got less of a gap, so it should turn out looking a bit snappier than before. So this is how it looks. And that's how our warp transform done. So what we can do is also close this. And if you hold control on your keyboard and just click the first one and the second one, right click, copy, head over to your second clip, right click, paste. There are still some changes that we need to make, especially to the Z disk of the second clip. So as you can see for our first clip, it scales out or zooms out, should I say. We want this to follow up on the second clip, which is this one. So open up your first warp transform and set the Z disk to something like 0.9. And you can also make any adjustments to your shift x y if necessary but i'm going to leave mine but as a result it should now smoothly scale out following up with the previous transition like that to make further improvements you can decrease your z disk so let's go for 0.85 and now the scale out is a little more noticeable than before next up we're going to improve this by adding in some one frame adjustment layers so i'm just going to push up my shake adjustment layers just like that and this is what i'm going to be doing adding on blur directional so before and after and the same goes for the second one so before and after after you can see it's shifted towards the left so what i did was i created one frame adjustment layers and just added on blur directional for my first adjustment layer i set the blur amount to 75 angle to negative 30 and then for my second one what i did was i set it to 75 15 and then 4 for the shift what the shift does is it moves your clip to a certain angle so because my angle is 15 it's pointing this way which is towards the top left corner so if i increase the shift you can see that's where it's being pushed towards like that and so what we have done is we have improved the impact between the transition by adding on that extra motion blur stage two flicker and grain so all you need to do is just copy down my settings so once you do add on s flicker just set the amplitude to one at the beginning ran frequency to 50 then you want to keyframe the amplitude which is one for me at the beginning head to the end one frame back set it to 0.25 right click on the keyframe and ease in which will result in a very smooth graph like this and as for the s underscore grain all i did was i changed the color amplitude to 0.05 then just like before highlight these by holding control right click copy and then head over to your second clip right click paste you can buy this project file for only 179 if you use the code vibe make sure to read the product description before buying anyways thank you for watching peace